first, we have to know what a physical symbol system is. One of the authors, Alan Newell, in another article, characterized physical symbol systems as a broad class of systems it is capable of having and manipulating symbols. Yet, it is also realizable within our physical universe. And he associates the appearance of physical symbol systems with the appearance of minds in the universe. A physical symbol system is comprised of symbols. Symbols, symbol structures, and processes. Or basically, just symbols and processes, since symbol structures are themselves composed of symbols. But later we see that processes can be encoded as symbol structures. It's basically all symbols. Now, when they talk about symbols, they mean discrete physical entities, like letters of the alphabet, or numerals, or marks on the tape of the Turing machine. Uh, they can also be the sounds that you utter. You know that symbol talk is abstract talk, so the physical symbol system hypothesis requires that for each symbol there must be a corresponding physical pattern that realizes it. So we're used to thinking of computers as dealing with ones and zeros, but ultimately those ones and zeros must be translated into physical phenomena, such as corresponding voltage values. Now if you're already nostalgic for last week, these are exactly the same kinds of things that Hogeland calls tokens in his discussion of formal systems. Symbol, then, are the atomic tokens of the system. But two or more symbols, when put together, can make a symbol structure. So if symbols are like letters, then symbolic structures are word-like structures, which can themselves be combined into larger structures, according to certain rules of formation. Consequently, symbol structures are combinations of symbols. Notice that the putting together of the symbols must also be physically realized, right? It must be a physical operation. For instance, concatenation may be realized by literally putting one token next to another, as when you're writing formulas, for instance. What the authors have in mind as examples when they talk about physical symbol systems is often formal logical systems being run on machines. I don't know if you've taken formal logic, but this is a, a usual example, for instance, the language of propositional logic. So the symbols would be the atomic propositions, which can be, say, any letter from A to Z. These usually stand for sentences, for instance, as well as the tilde and the ampersand, which are used for negation and conjunction, respectively. Now, if you put the atomic letters together, according to rules, so as to make longer sentences, you have what is called well-formed formulae, or woofs in the jargon. So this would correspond to symbol structures, since they are composed by the symbols. Finally, there is a set of rules for constructing woofs, which are the symbol structures of our example. So any symbol, any sentence letter is going to be a woof. And if something is a woof, then that symbol preceded by the tilde is also a well for a formula. And if something is a well for a formula, and this and something else, that psi symbol is a well for a formula, then the result of concatenating the first symbol, the ampersand, the second symbol is also a well for a formula, and so on and so forth. Finally, we have processes which manipulate symbols and symbol structures so as to create further expressions. So these include operations such as creating, copying, modifying, and destroying symbols. One example of this would be the rules of inference of propositional logic that allow you to derive propositions. For instance, here you have the conjunction rules. And so it says that if you have phi and if you have psi, then you can write phi ampersand psi. It means that if you have that al had hem and you say that al had x, then you can write I'll eight and had eggs. Anyway, these are just formal symbols. I'm just giving you examples so as to give some context. And if you have that symbol, the complex symbol, which is a phi ampersand psi, then after that you can write either phi or psi on its own. So these are roughly the components of a physical symbol system. But what is the physical symbol system? A physical symbol system is a machine that produces through time an evolving collection of symbol structures. It begins with a collection of symbol structures, and then by instantiating processes, it generates more and more and more symbol structures, presumably with some goal. And so thus far, we have confined ourselves to the purely syntactic or formal side of things. So, so far, our physical systems must be uninterpreted formal systems, like a game of chess or tic-tac-toe. The next step is to add semantics to the system. Simon and Newell, or Newell and Simon really, do this by introducing the notions of designation and interpretation. So let's begin with designation. The authors say that an expression designates an object if, given the expression, the system can either affect the object itself or behave in ways dependent on the object. So if this wavy dash is a symbol of the system S and it enables processes in the system to affect phi to the dog, 
or its behavior in the system is somehow correlated with FIDO's behavior, then wavy dash designates FIDO in S. Of course, it could also designate another symbol in the system, say another symbol structure, another process. So in any case, the, con the continue access to the object via the expression has been obtained, which is the essence of designation. So symbols and symbol structures can serve as internal representations of the environment to which the symbol system is seeking to adapt, either inside the system or outside the system. Here we have something like the notion of reference, where a symbol can designate or refer to other things. It might be a dog, another symbol, a memory location, anything that you can imagine. Furthermore, the system can interpret an expression if the expression designates a process. And if given the expression, the system can carry out the process. So suppose that you needed to perform some tedious arithmetical operation, such as dividing two large numbers. Then you could use a pocket calculator, or you could use the software in your laptop. So the calculator is a special purpose computer. It can only perform one very restricted set of operations on numbers, so let's suppose you have a very simple model. But your computer is a general device. It can do many things besides numerical operations. It can keep a calendar, display and edit documents. It can play music, etc. But notice that the only thing you can feed into the calculator is data of a numerical kind. So the kinds of operations you can do on it is also hardwired. But your laptop can be fed two kinds of things. It can be fed data, so the letters that you're writing or the songs that you want to listen to, but it also different programs, which allows it to become different virtual machines. It can become a calculator, a calendar keeper, a music player, a word processor. So those are different virtual machines playing on this physical machine. And, and this also illustrates the difference between a regular Turing machine and a universal Turing machine. In a regular machine, you have a, a set machine table that describes what it'll do to different kinds of data. And the only way you can interact with it is by feeding it data. The only input you can give it is data. So all the bars and spaces on the tape are data. On the other hand, a UTM or a universal Turing machine is such that it can mimic any other Turing machine, whether it's for adding, multiplying, finding palindromes, etc. And the tape will have two kinds of inputs. One is going to be the data, but the other is going to be a description of the program, which is a description of a Turing machine, also encoded as a list of bars and spaces. And so the process of using certain symbol structures and taking them as instructions for operating on other symbol structures, say the data, is called interpretation. Another example with another less rudimentary architecture. Suppose that a physical symbol system is a computer that has a microprocessor with random access memory, or RAM. So the symbol structures may include both instructions and data. They're just symbol structures. Suppose that the system designates some data value as a memory location. Then interpretation involves carrying out a process. For instance, this symbol structure may be interpreted as uh, an instruction to move a symbol, say, from one memory location to another. Now, notice that this is a relatively narrow and technical sense of interpretation that is used in computer science. But also Hogeland, when he uses the term interpretation, now let's talk for a second about Hogeland last week. When he uses the term interpretation in his discussion of interpreted automatic formal system, he has in mind a broader notion of interpretation as, say, the process of uh, finding and assigning meanings. As when you interpret some text by attributing some meaning to its sentence, you can assign some literal meaning or some reading between the lines. Or when you interpret a person's gestures as friendly or hostile, or when someone interprets tea leaves looking for signs of the future, etc. Okay, so again, this the idea is that interpretation in interpretation, the process can themselves be represented by symbols, symbol structures in, this, in, the, in the system. And this permits the system to interpret and carry out the process. That means that the collection of expressions can be turned into a process that carries out instructions. So, in sum, the most basic thing is that symbols are physical patterns that can be marks on a blackboard, that can be uh, sounds that are uttered, or it can be patterns of voltages, or you know, whatever you have. There are physical patterns that can be combined into complex symbol structures. So the system, moreover, contains processes for manipulating complex symbol structures. And these symbol structures can designate objects in the world. And the processes for representing complex symbol structures can themselves be symbolically represented within the system. And so, as I say, the digital computer is a kind of physical symbol system. Usually, they contain a memory, 
uh, a mechanism that is responsible for operations on the symbolic structures and uh, a control system for determining which operation should we perform at a time. And so, for instance, you can have different kinds of physical symbol systems. You have a propositional logic, and those are the kind of symbols that you have, and these are the kind of expressions that you can uh, form from them, and the sorts of processes that you can run of them, propositional logic, algebra, and you have uh, digital computers, and then chess. So a research issue would be, well, if the brain or part of the brain is a physical symbol system, what are its symbols, what are its expressions, and what are the processes? Mm -hmm.